Hello and welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer today on this Saturday of the sixth week of Ordinary Time. Our first reading is the story of Noah, not from Genesis, but a reflection on the story of Noah from the, uh, I believe, letter to the Hebrews. Let me look back. Let me make sure. Uh, don't want to send you down a wrong path if you're looking for it. And I hope you do look for these things once in a while. Readings. Yes, from the letter to the Hebrews. It's uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. And it talks about faith and the faith of Noah and how through his faith he rescued, saved his family. And... Uh, you know, if only we had that kind of strength that we could, uh, in faith, that we could rescue our families through the strength of our faith. But he must have seemed to his neighbors, his friends, his uh, you know, people around to be a little loony, to be building this huge, and if you've ever seen the, the ark, there's a, uh, if you've never been up there in Kentucky, just south of Cincinnati, Ohio, it's called the Ark Encounter. It's expensive, but it's worth going to once. Um, it's a life size built uh, built on the from the dimensions in the in the Bible, uh, the the exact size and, and specifications that are used in in the Bible were used to build this replica ark, and it's an amazing. It's it's huge. It's just ginormous. And uh, for Noah to be building something of that magnitude, uh, you know, on dry land, would have felt, seemed uh, not just a little odd, but very odd indeed to the people around him. But he trusted God, he listened to God, and his faith and his trust was a source of salvation to them. So we we thank Noah for uh, redeeming the the human race and giving us a second chance. God was going to destroy all of mankind, but he found Noah and his family to be righteous and uh, destroyed the earth, save Noah and his family. So thank you, Noah, and thank you for... Thank you to God for, for finding Noah uh, to be savable. <laughs> and uh, we hope that you find us also redeemable and worthy of salvation as well. Our gospel today, beautiful gospel, it's the story of the transfiguration. Jesus goes up the mountain with a couple of his disciples and in front of their eyes is transfigured into his divine presence his his human form is still there but added to it is the divine uh, uh, presence that that the glory of God shining through the face of Jesus uh, I can't imagine how glorious that may have looked to his disciples and they were dumbstruck, dumbfounded, and, uh, you know, just kind of babbled on, rambled on about, you know, well, this is awesome. What do we do? Should we build a tent? Because, you know, there were three tents he wanted to build because uh, Jesus was there conversing with, with Moses and with Elijah, uh, people that lived thousands of years prior to them. And there they were, the three of them together. Uh, just mind-blowing stuff, right, that these apostles had the privilege of witnessing. I want to read you something. Uh, in, in looking for my reflections on this gospel, I ran across, uh, as you know, one of my, my favorite theologians to, uh, to go to. And uh, in doing that today, uh, Bishop Barron, uh, wrote this on the transfiguration and I just found it just so beautiful that I'm not stealing it I'm I'm sharing it okay all right Bishop Aaron says his friends 
Today's gospel prevents, presents the transfiguration of Christ. What is the transfiguration itself? Mark speaks literally of a metamorphosis, a going beyond the form that he had. If I could use Paul's language, it is the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. And in and through his humble humanity, his divinity shines forth. The proximity of his divinity in no way compromises the integrity of his humanity, but rather makes it shine in greater beauty. This is the New Testament version, I like this, of the burning bush. Remember in the Old Testament, Moses went up and the bush was on fire, glowing with a great fire, but the bush was not destroyed. So here we see the glory of God's divinity shining through the face of Jesus, and yet his humanity is not compromised, not, not bothered whatsoever. But then he goes on. There's more. It's beautiful. The Jesus who is both divine and human is the Jesus who is evangelically compelling. If he is only divine, then he doesn't touch us. If he is only human, he can't save us. His splendor consists in the coming together of the two natures. Without mixing, mingling, or confusion. And then after the transfiguration, he says, note how this same Jesus then accompanies his disciples back down the mountain and walks with them in the ordinary rhythms of their lives. This is the Christ who wants to reign as Lord in our lives in every detail. If we forget about this dimension, then Jesus becomes a distant memory, nothing more than a figure from the past. Wow. I mean, I hope you find that as compelling as I do. That's just a lot packed into that little paragraph. So I just thought I would share that with you today. I thought it was the perfect reflection on the transfiguration, our gospel today. So as we pray our evening prayer, let us pray for the faith of Noah, even when we might sound absurd or crazy to those around us. Uh, that's fine. We can be mad to the rest of the human race as long as we're sane with our Lord. And we pray for this beautiful gift that through the apostles we too receive. We, we through reading this Bible, this, this gospel passage, uh, we share in that gift of understanding a little bit about the two natures of Jesus, being both totally human and totally divine. And without his humanity, he doesn't touch us. And without his divinity, he can't save us. Beautiful words. But he can do both. He touches us in our lives every day through the Eucharist in particular. And he is our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. So our evening prayer begins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praised be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. Who is like the Lord our God? 
Who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth? From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from his misery he raises the poor, to set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. To the childless wife he gives a home, and gladdens her heart with children. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, Word of God, surrendering the brightness of your glory, you became man so that we may be raised from the dust to share your very being. May there be innumerable children of the church to offer homage to your name from the rising of the sun to its setting. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. I shall take into my hand the saving chalice and invoke the name of the Lord. I trusted even when I said I am sorely afflicted, and when I said in my alarm no man can be trusted. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. O precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst, O Jerusalem. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Father, precious in your sight is the death of the saints, but precious above all is the love with which Christ suffered to redeem us. In this life, we fill up in our own flesh what is still lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Accept this as our sacrifice of praise, and we shall even now taste the joy of the new Jerusalem. I shall take into my hand the saving chalice and invoke the name of the Lord. The Lord Jesus humbled himself and God exalted him forever. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus humbled himself, and God exalted him forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus our Lord, furnish you with all that is good, that you may do his will. Through Jesus Christ, may he carry out in you all that is pleasing to him. To Christ be glory forever. Amen. Our hearts are filled with wonder as we contemplate your works, O Lord. Our hearts are filled with wonder as we contemplate your works, O Lord. We praise the wisdom which wrought them all as we contemplate your works, O Lord. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are filled with wonder as we contemplate your works, O Lord. If you want to be true children of your Heavenly Father, then you must pray for those who persecute you and speak all kinds of evil against you, says the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If you want to be true children of your Heavenly Father, then you must pray for those who persecute you and speak all kinds of evil against you, says the Lord. Christ had compassion on the hungry and performed a miracle of love for them. Mindful of this, let us pray. Show us your love, Lord. Lord, we recognize that all the favors we have received today come through your generosity. Do not let them return to you empty, but let them bear fruit. Show us your love, Lord. Light and salvation of all nations, Protect the missionaries you have sent into the world. Enkindle in them the fire of your spirit. Show us your love, Lord. Grant that man may shape the world in keeping with human dignity and respond generously to the needs of our time. Show us your love, Lord. Healer of body and spirit, comfort the sick and be present to the dying. In your mercy, Visit and refresh us. Show us your love, Lord. May the faithful departed be numbered among the saints whose names are in the book of life. Show us your love, Lord. Gathering our prayer and praises into one, let us offer the prayer that Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, Keep before us the wisdom and love you have revealed in your Son. Help us to be like him in word and deed, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night, everyone. Have a blessed Sunday tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you then. Uh, as you can tell, I'm still doing okay uh, post-surgery. I'm rehabbing okay, making progress. Uh, so uh, thanks for your continued prayers, and I hope to see you back at church very, very soon. God bless you all.